The idea of nature having rights might seem at first really kind of an odd fit for the American legal system. We typically think of rights as things that people have with respect to their government. Nature rights, though, is a very similar concept, just applied far more broadly to protect all of the natural environment. The idea of granting rights to nature is a way of saying that nature, or at least certain places, have their own independent claims that should be recognized within the legal system. The problem is that unlike an individual, unlike an association, unlike even a corporation, uh, there isn't anyone with intentions, with claims, with interests that we can identify to direct how those rights are exercised or defended. Recently, the United States Supreme Court has granted corporations the right of freedom of speech. And simply means that the legal system has recognized that in a certain context, political speech, corporations should have the same right freedom of speech as persons have. I think we could analogize this to the development of nature rights. It doesn't mean that a court is declaring that a river is a person, but a court might say that a river has the same right to live as a person does. Standing is what prevents courts from becoming general policy forums. Standing requires that any litigant, any person going to court, have a true injury that was caused by the other party and could be redressed by the court. Nature rights would essentially build on this standing limitation. So when the government does something to you directly, standing is not a problem. When the government regulates or fails to regulate someone else, and you claim that that has consequences for you, then standing is more difficult. Nature rights would allow the people who are closest to the river or closest to the landscape and have the greatest connection to go to court and protect those rights when they're threatened by competing interests. In the environmental context, standing is often an issue because the claims are that the government failed to take action to protect a species or a place or failed to regulate a particular industry or facility and that that somehow is them responsible for downstream harms to the individuals that object to that decision. The problem that we're trying to solve here is that the environmental law system that we have in the United States that's been around now since the 1970s has been a failure. Water is fluid. It does not respect boundaries, does not respect locations, and our values and needs for water have changed tremendously over the years. And so creating fixed property rights in something that's both fluid and for which our needs change and evolve has never made a lot of sense. A body of water could have an owner, could have a steward, could have a legal guardian, could have some sort of legal representative, but it's never going to be able to represent itself in a legal proceeding. It's ultimately going to be dependent upon individuals who are given the ability to act on behalf of that resource. And claims about nature itself having rights are really a way of sidestepping the question about how do we identify which people or which groups of people should be in a position to advance claims on behalf of particular places or particular natural systems. While the idea of protecting the environment in general and in the abstract is very hard to get your head around, protecting the river that you depend on for your drinking water, that you swim in, that you fish in, that you see every day, the river that you name as the place where you live, that I think is something that the legal system can get its, its proverbial arms around and resolve cases for. Arguing about nature having rights doesn't really get us to the underlying question of how to deal with competing claims over natural resources. Maybe a particular group should have more say about the resources that are in their community or that are in their locality. But the best way to achieve that is by identifying actual rights in the land and in the underlying resources, not trying to claim that the land itself has some sort of right that a particular group of people can divine independently. Nature rights is a way for individuals and communities to get their power and at least their voice over their local environment back. And so I think a lot of the interest in nature rights is coming from folks who are frankly distrustful of large government or are skeptical that large government is going to be the solution to our environmental problems. When people say that they want rivers or mountains or other natural places to have rights, what they usually mean is they want to be able 
to take action on behalf of those resources in courts or in administrative proceedings, rather than talking about nature having rights, we should look at ways of expanding the sorts of property rights and other rights we have in resources to a broader array of environmental concerns so that more people and groups are in a position to try and protect those resources about which they care.